So now that we have a good understanding of the two different types of saws, rip saws and crosscut saws, let's take a closer look at the geometry of the teeth on a typical Western style handsaw. So the first aspect of sawtooth geometry that we need to understand is the tooth size and spacing. Some people refer to this as pitch, similar to the thread pitch on a bolt or machine screw. And just as you would refer to the thread pitch on a machine screw by the number of threads per inch, we refer to the number of teeth in a handsaw by the number of teeth per inch. And there are two different ways that we can measure this in a handsaw, points per inch and teeth per inch. So here's an example of a common handsaw. Let's take a closer look at the teeth. As noted a second ago, we can measure tooth spacing by counting the number of teeth in an inch or by counting the number of points in an inch. A point is defined as the tip of the tooth. A tooth is measured from the bottom of one gullet to the bottom of the next. To measure the spacing in teeth per inch, or TPI, we measure from gullet to gullet and count the number of whole teeth in the inch. In this example, there are five teeth per inch. To measure the spacing in points per inch, or PPI, we measure from point to point and count the number of individual points in the inch, including the starting and ending points. In this example, there are six points per inch. So as the illustration shows, there will always be one more point per inch than there are teeth per inch. For example, this, is, this saw has four and a half teeth per inch, so it has five and a half points per inch. This crosscut saw has nine teeth per inch or 10 points per inch, and this sash saw has 12 teeth per inch or 13 points per inch. The second aspect of tooth geometry that we need to understand is the rake angle. And this is simply the angle that the front of the tooth makes with the tooth line of the saw. Let's look at another illustration. So here's our saw again. The handle's to the right, which means that the front of each tooth is facing left. If we draw a line connecting the gullets of the teeth, this is the tooth line. If we draw another line perpendicular to this line, this represents zero degrees of rake, or a perfectly vertical tooth. In Western sawtooth geometry, this is the minimum amount of rake that we typically have. In this particular example, the teeth lean back towards the handle at 20 degrees. Therefore, we would say that this saw has 20 degrees of rake. We'll talk more about specific rake angles when we go over saw sharpening later. For now, just keep in mind that lower rake angles or more vertical teeth create more aggressive saws, while higher rake angles or less vertical teeth make for a less aggressive saw. The third aspect of tooth geometry that we need to understand is called fleam. Now, if you recall in our discussion on the difference between rip saws and crosscut saws, the primary difference was that crosscut saw teeth had a bevel on them that made them behave like a row of small knives to make cross cutting or slicing across the fibers easier, while rip teeth were sharpened more like a row of small chisels or planes. Well, the angle of the bevel that's put on the crosscut saw teeth is called the fleam angle. In this photograph of teeth from a rip saw, you can clearly see that there is no bevel on the edges of the teeth. However, in this photograph of teeth from a crosscut saw, the bevels are clearly visible. It appears that the bevels are only on every other tooth, but that's because the teeth without the visible bevels actually have their bevels on the opposite side of the blade. The angle of these bevels from perpendicular to the saw is called the fleam angle. Since ripsaw teeth have no bevel, 
the front of the tooth is perpendicular to the side of the saw blade, and we call this zero degrees of flame. As we begin to add bevel to the teeth, the front of the tooth becomes non-perpendicular to the side of the blade. This angle off of perpendicular is what we call the flame angle. The final bit of tooth geometry that we need to be concerned with is set. Set is nothing more than a bend that is intentionally put into each tooth. And the purpose of set is so that the saw cuts a cut or a kerf that is wider than the thickness of the saw blade. Because if the kerf was the exact thickness of the saw blade, the blade would bind in the cut. So the set makes that kerf a little bit wider so that the saw doesn't bind. As you can see in this photograph, the individual teeth of the saw are slightly bent sideways in an alternating pattern. This is tooth set. Now while most older hand saws and some newer hand saws tend to taper in thickness from thicker at the tooth line to thinner at the back, that taper alone is typically not sufficient enough to prevent the saw from binding. In addition, saws like this back saw here that are used for cutting joinery do not typically taper in at all over the blade length. Therefore, most saws are going to require some amount of set in order to prevent them from binding. The exception to that rule are saws like this veneer saw and saws like this flush cutting saw that are designed not to have any set at all. And the Distin Model 120 Acme was a saw that was extremely tapered from tooth line to back because it was designed to run without set. It was a, a saw that was designed for cutting dry seasoned furniture grade hardwood. So it was really a, a saw that was made for furniture makers um, and it was designed to run without set. But other than the Distin Acme 120 and saws like a flush cut saw or veneer saw, very few saws are designed to run without any set at all.